chaos of popular culture makes your brain hurt. You really need relief in the form of a transfusion of analysis and humor. It's time for a poperation. Join hosts Eric and Stacy as they dissect pop culture one bloody organ at a time. It's just what the doctor ordered. Hello. Hello, I'm Eric. And I'm Stacy. And this is Operation. What are we talking about? We're talking today about my favorite, favorite thing in the world. I sense sarcasm. Little kids. Oi. I love other people's children. I do. Mm-hmm. Don't want them, don't need them. Not well, for me. and they always have that whole adage that actors do not want to be in a movie or a play or anything that has children or animals. Animals. Because you get upstaged, which is why <laughs> at my wedding, I did not allow anybody under the age of seven. So no little wedding. flower girl, no nope. cute little no. angel. No, who was the star? I was the star. <laughs> I will not be upstaged. I will not be upstaged at my own damn wedding. That wasn't going to happen, and and it did not. Thank you very much. But child stars can do that. We we've talked uh, in other episodes about like Shirley Temple uh-huh. and Judy Garland, yep. who were children when they started out, and you know it goes way way back. Certainly, there were children that were in plays and that sort of thing. Sure. But in movies, even in the silent movies, I mean, the classic is Charlie Chaplin's The Kid. Yep. Great movie, by the way. Uh-huh. If you've never seen a silent movie, that's not a bad one to start with. It's, it's, you see everything you need without any kind of vocalization from the actors. And, but the deal was, kids were just workers. Yep. And as we know from once we went from agricultural to industrial, Children worked in factories yeah. just as hard, if not harder, than adults. Yeah, if a kid decided they didn't want to go to school anymore mm-hmm. or their parents decided for them Correct. that we needed another worker to put food on the table, you went to the factory and right. you did whatever the adults did. Or sometimes dangerous things that oh, big yeah. adult-sized people could not do. Chimney sweeps, big yeah. thing there. <clears throat> and then along, you know, as industrialization moved along and people said, you know, this seems kind of wrong. I feel like maybe we shouldn't be risking the next generation with all of this danger. <laughs> so in the factories and that sort of thing, there, there came laws, the child labor laws, and it also then seeped into mm-hmm. the performing industries, including movies and Well, you know, television. you really can't employ five, six-year-old children to do much anymore. In this country, but you can put them in a movie, Correct. and you can put them on TV. Correct. That is interesting, and I I think it's it is also interesting as that who who does that? I did take my youngest to one of those cattle calls. Really? She was a baby. She was a beautiful baby, uh, beautiful baby. I got stopped in the street. Beautiful. That's how pretty she was. So, thought well we'll give it a shot. O M G. First of all, <laughs> it was a racket. Second of all, there were hundreds of people there. Yeah. Because it seems like an easy way to make money. You feel like if my kid get in, can get into modeling or acting, because the advertisements um, on the radio are about, does your kid want to be the next Disney star? And, you know, all you're thinking about at that point is, oh, my gosh, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, Raven Simone. We could do that. Yeah, because I want my kid to grow up and shave her head by herself and then put a baseball bat through a car window. That's my dream Is for that? my child. You're weird. But yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, though. So you don't think about that, though. When you're standing there, you're going, we're going to be a star, honey. We're going to be a star. <laughs> uh, I got there. But what it did, honestly, that cattle call is I looked around and said, I'm not one of these people. I'm not a stage mom. No, you are and not I Mama don't. Rose. I can't see you putting up with that <laughs> bullshit for two seconds. That, I, it I, shocks me that you even went. But I, She was such a pretty baby. Uh, she was. She was pretty. But it, the whole thing being, I realized that that was also not what I wanted for her. Mm-hmm. And I think that... You know, there are prodigy kids yeah. that maybe they need to be performing. They need to be playing the piano or they need to be acting or singing or whatever it is. Yep. I mean, every kid who's ever been an Annie, uh-huh. for God's sake. But clearly, I was not one of those. But I also think it takes a, a special person to either be a parent, but certainly the kid. Because as a parent, though, you're putting your child in a position that is not normal. They are no. not going, if, if it works out. If, if what you want to happen happens, 
they don't have a normal childhood. No. And and I think they have to be that kind of kid who absolutely doesn't want one. You know, I've I've heard parents of child performers say there's no way to keep this particular kid from the audition. It's all they want to do. Correct. And then I've I you also get the kind of the Mama Rose from Gypsy kind of mm-hmm. stereotype of the frustrated living vicariously performer living vicariously through her children wants them to be stars so that she can hopefully you know, reap a little bit of the luxury, you know, a little glitter will rub off onto her as well. And that's, I think, the the cliche that we're Correct. a little bit more familiar with. Correct. But I, I do, I agree. There are some kids that they are driven. That is what they want to do. They're the yep. ones who know about the next audition and say, Mommy, you need to take me. And that, I think, is fine because they're going toward their own dreams. But at the same time, why do we have these child? You know, why, why, why are they so popular? Well, I, well... Can't really speak to their popularity, but uh, you know one of the reasons we have them is for the same reasons why we need actors of all shapes, sizes, and races. Because no one would accept an adult playing the part of a child, and if you're doing a movie uh, where you know, so you just need the kids to play kids. Now you don't have to center a movie around the kids, but then if you want to, I guess there's a market for that. You know, well, kids I mean, want to see themselves on screen the same way that adults want to see themselves on screen the same way that. People of different racial groups, the That's same way true. that I, as a gay right. person, occasionally want to go see a movie about gay people. I want right. to see myself reflected up there in some way. Right. You want sure to be able kids... to relate and then have an emotional connection. So little to kids them. feel the same way, I'm sure. But I mean, I think as adults, you know, watching, it is nice because they do, when you see children on screen or on stage, it kind of makes you feel that same way again that you did when you were. You, you, there's that feeling of innocence, that feeling. Well, there was a time when the biggest star in the world was Shirley Temple. I mean, she was... Correct. And she was like four? Four or five. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, during the Great Depression, right, people really needed needed to escape back to that earlier part. That still shocks me to this day. The idea that, you know, in today's entertainment landscape, would we all be flocking to see a five-year-old perform as opposed to the adults that are now not our now screen not icons. now i don't think so now because i think that we have too many other choices i don't think that there could i don't know that you can be a king or queen of all media at that point at this point because sure. there's so many and i think for children and especially if they're five that's five <laughs> years of experience sure and only two of those years can you remember i mean and and i will say having seen you know uh shirley temple do her tap dance up and down the stairs to the good ship lollipop she was brilliant. I mean, that was a five-year-old kid who was a pro. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew how to make all those faces. She knew how to. I mean, she was she was very talented. I she was very talented. And I and I will say, I do think she had maybe a kind of stage mom, if I recall that story correctly. But she also wanted to do that. Yeah. And she was happy to do that. But then famously didn't want it to do it much after that. You know, Bobby Sox. Or well, she made. had an awkward, as a lot of kids do, their adolescent puberty makes it a little weird and awkward. <laughs> and they change, you know, there's some some modern examples mm-hmm. of how they kind of went, oh, you're not so cute anymore kind yeah. of thing. Which is awful. Which is, again, we want to see cute. So we let's bring see... Cousin Oliver on the Brady Bunch because our little oh, kids are not gosh. quite so little They're anymore. That's and, right. That and was, we need some more cuteness. That was, and, it, and it was scandalous. They did it in Little House on the Prairie, too, if you recall. Sure. They brought in Cosby Show? Jason Bateman. Yeah. Uh, on that Little House on the Prairie. Really? Was that him? I believe he was one of them. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I know. But, but I think that there is something, because also kids, if you have a kid say something, you can have a kid say something that might be, it would be uncomfortable if an adult said it. They can get away yeah, with saying yeah. stuff. Good recent example of that. that did you watch can. Big Little Lies on HBO? I did not. Okay. Great show. I have not finished it yet, mm-hmm. so I can't give you a spoiler because I don't know what happens. But I, in the very first episode, I was very taken with this little girl who plays one of Reese Witherspoon's children who's just a little bit more precocious than you would ever find in life and says horrible things mm-hmm. that really you would discipline a child for saying. But, you know, I tell you what, in the TV screen, when you actually don't have to take that kid home and live with them 24-7, very funny. Right. And that's that's the thing. And I sometimes have issues with that because I feel like that's not real and, and it's contrived to me. Yeah. Um, I will also say this. 
I think it's better now that we have better American child actors than we used to, but it used to be that American child actors were like, meh. They were saying their lines and fairly robotic. Mm-hmm. But I, you could pull a kid off a train in England and they could be Laurence Olivier. British <laughs> children, I don't know what it is, but they are amazing and they don't even have to be actors. They just pull somebody off the street and they're amazing. But Americans, they got to be trained. And I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I'm just making oh. a statement. That means nothing to anybody. <laughs> um, so how young is too young, though? We're talking about Shirley Temple was, was four or five. Michael Jackson, how old was he when he started four or five oh, yeah, yeah. at the same time? Well, you, know, you think about Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, who had to play the same character. Brooke because Shields they were, you know, they were started so, um, as a baby. You know, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so you need infants in I a movie, you get an infant. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. We don't, we don't do baby dolls anymore. That's not going to fly. No, no, exactly. You can't get away with that anymore. It has to be fairly real. But then, as you said, when they get into your teenage years, you can have some fun with it. Even Married with Children brought in a little kid once yeah. the the two main kids got in their teens. They yeah. were, you know, 15 and 17. you got to bring in that little kid so that you can have that precociousness and have uh-huh. that, you know, silliness going on. But, yeah, I think that it really it, – it's funny – that we need kids, yeah, we need it because you want that realistic thing and you want everybody to feel like they're connecting to somebody. But I think a lot of it is that you you use children in order to say something that adults saying it would be either awkward or inappropriate or not as funny or it would be ham-fisted. Yeah. And so yeah. you get a kid to say it, and it seems a little bit better. Well, and also, in, in uh, you know, kids can also be more honest emotionally than adults will be. Adults monitor their own behavior. So just as you were talking, I was reminded of Tootie from Meet Me in St. Louis, remember? Uh, and the whole family is very upset about moving to New York. Okay, first of all, can we just go down a little bit of a rabbit hole? Who the hell is upset about moving to New York from St. Louis, Missouri? But this family was. And... You know, Judy Garland is is being the good daughter and mm-hmm. trying to sing to her, have yourself a merry little Christmas, everything's going to be okay. And Tootie's like, no, I'm going to go chop the heads off my snowmen now and have a big, huge meltdown because kids, in a way, are more honest about their emotions than They don't feel like they have to be. edit. They don't, and they don't edit themselves. Right. They just, they feel what they feel as they're feeling it. Um, and so I think kids can be interesting storytelling devices in that way right. as well because... Right. Okay. Where an adult couldn't just have a meltdown, we'd think they were crazy. If a kid's really upset, right. they can have a meltdown, and it's like, yeah, they're honestly And they're that. a kid. Yeah. It's okay that they're a kid. I don't think you jump into putting your kid into show business. I think you shouldn't jump in putting your kid into show business without some thought because there are ramifications. A, yeah, as we said, they aren't going to have a normal childhood if they are successful. And then what is the rest of their, you know, what happens? You're talking about Shirley Temple. She gets into adolescence. She can't get jobs. Yeah. And that's what happens to a lot of these kids. So then what? If all you are is this funny child, Mm -hmm. actor, or performer, what happens when you can't do that? No one will hire you to do that. Who are you? And you're already a teenager and all the hormones are going crazy and you're trying to figure out who you are. So that can lead to even more weird mental issues. Yeah. So when we come back, we are going to talk about what happens when child celebrity goes wrong. You know, what are some examples? Yeah. yeah, And, and, and what are some of the the downsides really of, you know, so (laughs) fair warning, if you're thinking about taking your kid to the next cattle call, because you want to be a star, (laughs) listen to some of these cautionary tales when we get back. Open wide. It's your prescribed dose of poperation with Eric and Stacy. Alrighty, so we are back talking about some child stars, yeah, some of the pros a... and the cons of, of being a child star, some of the ones who, who made it through, but right now some of the ones who didn't quite make it through, that it wasn't child stardom wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Yeah. And I think if you were conscious at all during the 80s, <laughs> you were aware, and I'm talking pre Brat Pack, or not, they weren't the Brat Pack, but no. they're Corey Haim and Corey Feldman. Yeah, the Corys. The Corys, uh, they had been, as children, Corey Haim was in Lucas. I think that was his first mm-hmm. big movie, which is uh, a really good one for him. And Corey Feldman, uh, Stand By Me, yes. and The Goonies, 
Corey Feldman had a lot of work. But they were, they, everybody called them the Coreys. They were these two child stars, and they were getting great older. Friends. Great friends, best friends. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, it was it worst case scenario in that uh, Corey Haim got addicted to drugs because they do. That's what happens once you hit your teenage years, mm-hmm. or sometimes in, in some people's cases, you don't even have to hit your teenage years. Yeah. You are offered once you're successful, which is what you were striving to be. You now have access to literally anything that money can buy. Money and fame fame can buy. And if there's no one there to help guide you, then you can go down a poor road. And that's kind of that's what happened with Corey Haim. He yeah. tried to come back and, and get recovered and all that, but he, he went down as a teenager, addiction, all of that, tried to recover. He and the other Corey did like a reality show for a minute. Oh right! And then after that, Haim, I think he, you know, overdosed, OD'd, OD'd, and he yeah. he was dead. But that's the thing is that you've got you know River Phoenix, brilliant kid actor. Yes. Literally brilliant. He's possibly my favorite child actor ever. If you've never seen Stand by Me, a lot of good child actors in there. Uh huh. But River Phoenix stands out. And he was amazing. Got in his teenage years, early 20s, ODs. Yeah. Dana Plato. Did some good work as an adult, though. He uh, did. My, he my was going to have was... No, he was going to have a career. Yeah. He was going to have, I don't know, Johnny Depp's career. Uh-huh. He was going to have a career. But again, who's controlling? And once, and of course, once the kid's 18, they have control of their own self. But again, they didn't have normal lives. Yeah. They had these weird child star lives. Yeah. And if there's no... And I don't know Corey Haim's parents. I don't know River Phoenix's parents. I'm no. not saying anything about parenting. But no. something that does come up for me is that, you know, when you say who is taking care of you, are the people who are taking care of you your parents or your agent? You know, how are they... Correct. You know, right. how are, how are, how are you Is it this entourage guided? that you yeah. created and... Um, and is mom ever around for a reality check? You know, when things get a little out of hand, you know. Correct. Who knows? knows? And I'm not saying anything about those two cases in particular. I don't know anything about it. But that is, you know, I do remember stories, though, of Drew Barrymore's mother dropping her off at the Studio 54 when she was done with E.T. and filming Firestarter and surrounded by people doing coke off the tables, you know, and living the high life. Didn't she go into recovery at 13? Oh, something like that. Or I mean, it was, earlier. it was, yeah. it was, but yes, now, and Drew Barrymore's, because her father was a Barry, obviously a Barrymore, but he was the son of John Barrymore, who was an actor. Mm-hmm. All the Barrymore's are known for their addictions. Yeah. They were all of them. Brilliant actors, yep. except for her father, who couldn't quite make it, mm. and her mother, who was a wannabe. Thus, Drew, again, she's a good actor, but she was kind of, you know, there was a stage mother-itis kind of thing going on there with Jade. That was her mom's name. Yeah. Uh, But, yes, correct. At 13, you're in recovery. That means that you had a good two years. (laughs) (laughs) So you started when you were 10 or 11, and that's awful. But that's Dana Plato, who was uh, uh, different different strokes. Horrible story there. All of the different strokes kids had issues, but Dana yes. ended up dead. The other two, I think, survived. Well, Gary's no longer with us, but not because of that. Not because drugs. of that, no. Yeah. It, he, but Michael Jackson is on this list for me of those who didn't quite get out of. And I well, think we've he's talked like, about Michael Jackson's childhood before on this show. And everybody's you know? heard of it. Yeah. I mean, and you he, talk about the mother. Well, the mother was there, he had a mom there. He had a mom, but he had a very disjointed life, right? I mean, on, uh, won't, won't repeat it too much, but, you know, he, he had his life on the road Correct. and then his life at home with mom, who was right. this very conservative religious woman, and just the kind of bipolar nature of his own childhood. Now, obviously, he had a very successful career as an adult. Correct. That um, is, but it, I'm not sure that those issues ever left him. But you, you look know? at he was like three or four and was pushed into this working – he was working yeah. for – the family, and when he became the most popular, he can't stop at that point. No. And, of course, with a dad like he had, Joe's not going to let him stop. No. But that's the problem is you have kids who are now the breadwinners of the family. Yeah. So they can't stop even if they choose to. And you hear lots of stories about you know moms being like the agents, the ones who are holding all the paperwork and consulting with all the lawyers. 
it is a question for me when I when I see kids who are really really popular. It's like you know what is your mom to you? We have a good friend who is works in in television, and she was talking to me the other day about this, and she said you know she knew one of those, and I don't remember it's a French last name. They were on Little House in the Prairie, Matthew and Patrick. And they have this French last name. Oh, I know um, what you're talking about. Lost something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, she said that she knows both of them. They both worked on, on something. And Patrick wants to continue acting. Uh, and his brother just does not. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said most normal, well-adjusted people in the entire world had great parents. Mm-hmm. Their parents were around, but their parents were parents to them. Right. And not, you know, necessarily now, you know, um, I'm not... Starring in their own TV show, and so I don't know, you know, where that crew is going, but perfectly sane, well-adjusted. And I think people. you have to have that, and 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 we'll talk about the ones who did have that. And I think that may be a common thread is that you had parents that were very, very present. Now, one example of somebody who's on both of my lists of those who it went wrong and those who actually came out on the other side is Britney Spears. Yeah, because so she becomes a celebrity. And is working, and she was pulling her family out of, mm-hmm. I think, it, what is it, Alabama, wherever she's somewhere yep. south. And so she's got, she's the breadwinner. Yep. She's the Disney star. And then again, access to all sorts of things, mm-hmm. gets, you know, has an entourage, does, you know, goes nuts. So everybody remembers she shaved her head, took a bat to the car, mm-hmm. whatnot. Her dad then stepped in. So her parents, who had been there to drive her to the auditions and whatever when she was a kid, had kind of stepped back and let her be. And then her dad stepped in, and and, uh, she went into recovery, and he took over her finances. And now her career couldn't be hotter. Yeah. She's, you know, so she has come out the other side. But there was a time when you're like, any day now, we're going to find out that Britney's dead. Uh, so I think that it does, there is that parental thing. Well, and something I think that, that went on with Britney Spears that I think is also just indicative of this whole child star thing is when do you, when does your persona switch from being a child, a precocious child star, in her case, a Disney star, mm-hmm. and you really saw her at some point want to break out of that. And, and yes, she wants to be seen as a grown woman, but then the hyper-sexualized content that she was, I remember when she was doing, oops, yeah. I did it again, yes. and she was in her little schoolgirl outfit yes. with the pigtails, yeah. but also the really sexy dancing, and of course the shirt's tied off so right. the bare midriff is there, and all this kind of, you know, and, and that's something that whether or not it's a sexual thing or just how do people stop seeing me as the kid that I used to be and start looking at me as an adult. I think that's a hard transition. That's it's a something very that all difficult... people go through. Correct. All people do that, whether you're in the entertainment industry Correct. or not. But when you're in the entertainment industry, you're everybody, doing it in public. Correct. The world is watching. You yeah. go through this awkward phase that everybody else likes to forget later on, but no one will forget it because it's on film <laughs> and it's on TMZ. Yeah. And, and uh, sometimes when you're trying to do that, you go a little bit too far, you know, into correct. that. Because, you know, you could argue that, you know, Christina Aguilera, who was with her on the Mickey Mouse Club, you know, also, mm-hmm. you know, be, when she decided to, like, say, I'm grown now, it's yep. like, oh, are, and, and how, you and, know, and, and oh, wearing and nothing and mud wrestling. I see exactly and... where you're grown. <laughs> uh, what is it? Ab fab. And the world's your gynecologist. Um <laughs> But on, on the those who didn't quite make it out, Amanda Bynes, speaking of, she wasn't a Disney kid, she was a Nickelodeon yeah. kid, yeah. had everything going for her, was starting a, an adultish kind of movie career, uh-huh. and I have no idea what happened there, no. and she's a complete nut job. Shia LaBeouf, he... Is that how you say that? Is it LaBeouf or LaBeouf? I don't know, I no and idea. here's the best part of this, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so... I think he's an idiot, <laughs> but here's what I'm going to say to you. I transform movies, notwithstanding they are what they are. Yeah. And I enjoyed them for what they are. So don't get me wrong, but I remember him from even Stevens, which was a TV show. I think it was Nickelodeon. I don't think it was Disney. I don't know which one it was. Maybe it was, I don't know which one it was, but my girls would watch it. And it was about he and his sister. They were the Stevens and they were always at odds. They were in middle school. Okay. And it was his comic timing, it rivaled Michael J. Fox. That's how good Shia LaBeouf was as a child actor. And I remember going, he's amazing. 
And then he went on and he did some things that were amazing. And he started getting through his adolescence and he, you know, and, he, and again, Transformers came along. What's happened the last several years? I have no idea. Nut job. Total nut job. <laughs> and I don't, you know, again, does that have to do with him being a child star? At the same time, the money that he's made, you know, it gives him the ability to be a complete ridiculous person. Eccentric, we'll say. Really? <laughs> That's what you're going to do? No, I'm sorry. I save eccentric for people I respect. I think he's an idiot. Well, and so, but I, so, and, and, okay, so now his argue story's with you not a over. little bit. Exactly, because if, if, if he had the tragic ending that Dana Plato did, right. or, or that Corey Haim did, you Correct. know, he might kind of go, you know, we, we'd think of him in this kind of tragic sense. It's only because these issues are still working themselves right. out he's on in a regular his 20s, basis. So it's not yeah. like he couldn't come out the other side. But it's like, that's a child actor. And here's what happens when they go wrong also. You sit there, River Phoenix is a huge one, and see this talent that, for River, obviously, he can't make any more movies, and that that's the tragedy. Yeah. For Shia, it's like, you actually are pretty talented. Why are you being such a crazy why are you being so cray cray? Well, and you and know, it could be addiction. It could be it could, you know lots of things that happen in again, that life. Again, access, and yeah. if you don't have this foundation, one person. I before we we go on this one, and, and of course I'll throw out the word, the name Lindsay Lohan. Everybody knows that story. Yeah. So that, and that that's still kind of a work in progress too. I don't know where she's going to end. She's she's still around, mm-hmm. but back in my day, big child actor from a very famous actor, Tatum O'Neill. Oh, and yeah. her father was Ryan O'Neill. He is Ryan O'Neill. He's still around. And Oscar winner Tatum O'Neill. Oscar winner. She was. Uh, I think maybe when she won the Oscar, she was the youngest child to, to win, ever win. To win. And I think she in, was like a, in a real category because they'd often had juvenile categories. Correct. She was way not. She was uh, best and, supporting and actress. Best supporting actress. I think she was nine. And she was very good at Paper Moon. If you want to see it, is the movie. And her father played opposite her mm-hmm. uh, in it and it was it's a delightful movie it's a very cute movie sad to watch though now it's it's sad to watch now because you know what happened and she she grew up she was in a bunch of some teen movies when she was a teen she was a beautiful girl she was in bad news bears the original bad mm-hmm. news bears and she grew up into she did not really have an awkward stage was she the one who was in that summer camp movie with Christine Little McNichol Darlings. yes so yes. they're trying to lose Little their Darlings. virginity yes. yeah yeah and after that, again, when you get in that middle, sometimes you have a hard time getting work, and I think that's what happened to Tatum. And she made some poor choices. Also, the O'Neills are known for their addictions, mm-hmm. and she became addicted. Well, she, it, but then she married John McEnroe, the tennis player. Sure, and that was a big, big deal. And everybody thought, okay, that's what she's going to do. So she was wife and mother. She had a couple of kids, but her addiction was still there. Big scandals. TMZ didn't exist at the time, but if it had, it would have been crazy at the McEnroe house because they'd have these huge fights, whatever. He kicks her out, divorces her. She has no contact with the kids. Finally went into recovery. She's out now, and I guess it was two years ago she did this awful, awful miniseries thing. She can't act. Now, she had this great childhood career and she was brilliant and she's not and and now in paper moon what is that's and i'm like well your dad was was ryan o'neill and he was he was taking her to his parties his hollywood parties that he was going to he'd he'd bring her along it's like uh, drew barrymore's mom it's like what are you all thinking so i feel i sit here and i don't again i don't know the parents of any of these people personally and i certainly i'm not a perfect parent but i wonder if that is a common thread between these guys who just didn't quite. Yeah, and and sometimes I do. You know, the the two of us, we both made a stab at, at doing, uh, you know, the arts professionally. People who perform for a living are an interesting bunch, to say the least. They're, you know, emotionally, they they require a lot. Uh, and you have to. <laughs> I don't make... want to say needy, but I'll say it needy. No, they um, are needy, and they're insecure because yeah. that's part of what you're out there. Is you have to you have to be secure enough to want to go out in front mm-hmm. of people. Risk the ridicule, yep. but it's important enough for you to get that adulation, if and you applause, will, yep. to risk it, and you yeah. do risk it. Yeah, often. and then and and when you make it that big as a child, to your earlier point, you risk not being able to have that transition. How do you into... find that? And maybe that's part of the thing that addictions go toward is that you're looking for that high. Yeah. And, and how no do you one's hiring beat, you right now? How do you beat winning the Oscar at nine? Oh, what do you wow. do at ten? Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And and but it but it kind of, you know, it, it it's it's shocking that she wasn't able to to keep any of that talent but, because she was amazing no, in that she's film. Not, it's it's I did not I no, I don't think it's there. I, I she'd have to prove it. What I've seen that she's done so far, because I every once in a while, if I find something that she's done, I'll look at it because it's it's she's my age, mm. and I'm just like. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, okay, when we come back, we'll, we'll it'll be happier. Yes, happier we're going to talk people. about we're going to talk about all of those child stars that you might not even remember were child stars because yeah. they're such fabulous Correct. adult entertainers. You know, not adult entertainers in that way. Get your minds oh out of the gutter. Oh my God, Eric! <laughs> <laughs> all right, when we come back. Wondering what room you've stumbled into? Don't mind the scalpels. You're in the Poparation Room with Eric and Stacy. And we're back. This is Poparation. I'm Eric. I'm Stacy, And we're talking about child stars, the good and the bad parts of it. And we've talked about some of the ones who didn't quite, they were child stars, yeah, 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 but they couldn't quite, it wasn't necessarily a happy ending, let me put it that way. Yeah. Because Michael Jackson did parlay his child starness on and, and his celebrity on but I don't know that he ended up extraordinarily happy it was he, it always he always seemed to be searching yeah for certainly very successful I mean thriller will go down in oh history and you know that that'll be yeah. an important thing in the history no, in the of music 80s, for a long he time couldn't make he couldn't make a bad thing. but you know you're right did did his and I really do believe that that many of what we'll just generically call his issues mm -hmm. stemmed from some of those experiences he had as a child star where he was he, not treated well. He was he, not, he did not, you talk he was about, not handled with care the way a child correct. needs to be. Correct. And they, again, it's that normalcy I think gives you a foundation to where you can then deal with life and all of the weirdness yeah. that it hands you in, so, in a good way. So let's talk about some of the happy stories First person that came to mind when I think about, you know, child stars that kind of surprise you about being child stars because, of course, as a woman, she was the epitome of what it meant to be, you know, a gorgeous female. But Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, my gosh. People forget she was a child yes, star. Yes, but she was a big star as a she kid. She was huge because she was always beautiful. Yeah. Elizabeth Taylor is one of those who never had an awkward phase. She was beautiful from the moment she probably born, yeah. but she, she was in... Uh, Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is a little child. She was the one who died, though. She's she wasn't one, young she, Jane. She was not a... No, she, she was, was not, not oh, young she Jane. She couldn't be Jane. She was too pretty. There's well, no yeah, way she right. would never Jane, have been yes, Jane. Yes, Jane was supposed to be plain, but she was the beautiful girl who, mm -hmm. who died in the orphanage. In the orphanage. Big, the first big kind of crying moment is when Jane's Correct. friend kicks it uh, in the orphanage. And then, of course, National Velvet. Nash, she, all those horse movies. And <laughs> uh, she and Roddy McDowell were great friends because of those movies. Yeah, and yeah. But yeah, the original she, fag hag, yeah. Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, hey, true that. That's so true. <laughs> you think about it. All of her best friends, Roddy Montgomery McDowell, Clift. Rock Hudson, yes. Montgomery Cliff, they were all gay. Yes. She loved them so much. And well, she, and we loved her. She we was on the forefront her. of the AIDS, the whole AIDS thing. Because all of her friends were dying. She, she was very and important to her. And she said, we're going to fix this. Um, yeah. But she went on, and she did, was, you know, she was obviously Richard Burton. That was a big, you talk about scandalous. But she, is her career... She was in so many classics, Butterfield sure. 8, yeah. Giant, which is now, an amazing. Now, one. Elizabeth Taylor is also, in addition to being an actress and an activist, she's probably also really famous for having a gajillion husbands. Seven. So, you know, did she, did she also have some issues? Sure. You know, right. found it difficult to maintain a long, successful marriage. But uh, nonetheless, very successful. She's very passionate. And, and, but a, also, it seems like a really good person. You know, oh, I think I mean, so. Yeah. I think so. But again, a lot of her, and again, her marriages, all of that, yes, issues with relationships. But I believe she's the one who said that she married everybody that she slept with. <laughs> so I don't know well, what that says okay. about her. Yeah, that means she only slept with seven men in her life. It's not bad. Yes, that is in, uh, that's implied. Mm -hmm. Is it true? I don't know. But that's implied that she said that. <laughs> but no, she was a child star. She was great. She, she had great. a great career all of her life. Lived yep. pretty pretty old. So I, I consider her a success. Yeah. The other one that comes to mind for me, um, only because I was... Did, did you watch True Blood? I watched the first uh, season. Okay, I watched the whole thing, even after it jumped the shark. And it was still kind of... It was, you know, we, we, had a, we had a guilty pleasure show a while back. It was something that I was perfectly happy to watch and talk about at the beginning. It became a guilty pleasure. 
little bit later on. But Anna Paquin. Yes. Um, sometimes people forget that she also, like Tatum O'Neill, won, won an Oscar young. as a very young child in the piano. Now she annoyed me in that movie, but I think she was supposed to. I think she was um, supposed to. You know, she was a she played a precocious young character and was shocked. When she won the Oscar, I, mean, I just remember her little face up there with you know this gripping this big huge statue. I can't believe it. And interestingly, you know, like she is is want to do, if she did a movie tomorrow, they could bill her as Oscar winner. Correct. Once she will be Once she win, they can't take that away from correct. you. Correct. Correct. Uh, but as you said, she figured out a way to move her keep her career going. She disappeared for a while, and that might be part of it. Is that maybe she had that awkward phase? And then she popped in the X Men. Yeah, she was in the. Oh, you're right, because she was in that too, um, and that might, that was before True Blood. But it's so also she was a little. Here's also the thing: it's it's good choices. Yeah, it's good choices yeah. of what you choose to be in. Yeah, and you know a success story who who went away, and I think this has something to do with why she was able to to do so well as an adult was Jodie Foster. She is an astounding success story, yeah. I think, because she did start very young as an actress and just kept going making good choices not yeah. that, that's not true all, not all of her movies are perfect but she made but a ran the good gamut. Choices. i mean who does freaky friday and taxi driver where she played a 12 correct. year old prostitute correct and then this funny movie where suddenly i'm in my mother's body and oh my gosh right. I have boobs, and it's disney know? and it's disney she had a really bad hairdo in that particular movie. <laughs> she did. She I did. saw it in the theater, but the la- <laughs> when they pretty her up for the last scene, she has like the worst hair ever known to man. <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. It's worth the price of admission to seeing the original Freaky Friday. But she is a success. Yes. You know, she's a director and producer. She forged her own way. Mm-hmm. She stopped for a while. She went and got her degree. In something completely unrelated yeah, to the arts, Yeah, I don't arts, remember correct? what it was, but it was, well, I believe it was Yale. Mm-hmm. And uh, another one I was talking about, uh, Brooke Shields, kind of the same thing. Yeah. She also started, she started as a baby model. So yes. she's literally, she was the Gerber baby, just an FYI. She was also the, played a prostitute at a very young did. age. did. I don't know whether that's a theme or I not. Don't, well, it, it, those are two roles that you might think oh, this is a bad path to go down. But clearly it's not about the material you play. It's about what your life is like off camera. And she and I do know that Brooke has a very strong mother figure. and Who's a mom. Who was a mom. Yeah. And I think Jody had that as well, actually. I think she had a very strong family unit going on. And Brooke parlayed it. She, she also took off. She went to Princeton mm-hmm. and figured out who she was a, yeah. apart. And maybe that's what we're talking about. You figure out who you are apart from this star, apart from this celebrity. Who are you? They both chose after college to go back into performing. Mm-hmm. Uh, they went different directions. Brooke went on TV. And I'll be honest with you, she became a very good comedian. I find she's her timing is very good now. I did not care for her as an actress when she was a child. Jody was always good. Brooke, not so much. She was tolerable, but she was gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And that's why she got parts. But now I think she's a really good comedian, and I, and I appreciate it. But again, success. Those yeah. are successful. You know, suddenly ones. Susan was on the air how long? Like A really long time. Five, six years? Gave maybe Kathy more? Griffin a career. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, no, no. It was... And, I think that, again, those are really good success stories, but there is a theme there. And you know, who one of the biggest success stories of child stars made good, uh-huh. in my opinion, is Ron Howard. Oh, right. If you only know Ron Howard from his directing of Arrested Development or, or the movies that he's done, yeah. you may not know that he was a child star back in the day, like when he was four or five. The Andy Griffith, but that wasn't even his first show. Really? He did The Rifleman. Which was in the fifties. He did the rifleman for a little bit. How young was he? Because he was like Opie four or five. Was, yeah, Opie was little. Yeah, but he was five or six. Okay. They always played younger than they were. Okay. But anyway, yes. He, and I mean, I think it was just a couple of episodes in the rifleman, gotcha. which again, that was a TV show back in the. Well, I was not alive. <laughs> Everybody, calm down. But so anyway, he started there. As Opie, yep. then... He was adorable. He was adorable. And then he also had... Happy Days. Happy Days. And then after that, I think it's when he went into directing yeah, and that decided, sort of thing. He, well, he started losing his hair and thought, well, this this is not a road that's going to be... I think he won more control over it. But again, he had a, yes. his family. Was, and I, I joke. He's, all, he's, he's an amazing artist. I mean, he has an eye. He's a he's very amazing. gifted director. I love him as a director. And his family 
may, helped make choices for him when he was younger. Mm-hmm. There were things that he was offered, parts yeah. he was offered, and he said, no, that's just a little too much for him right now. Yeah. He's got this, but he's also got to do school, mm-hmm. and he's got to do... And so I feel like there's a theme. Yeah, yeah. Are you watching This Is Us? I am not. Okay, it's the one that makes everyone cry. I know, I, I, I haven't know, seen it and that's I'm, why. I'm interested, you're not interested. Um, I, I haven't seen it, but Mandy Moore is another... She's amazing. I've yeah. always liked her, though. Yeah. I've always liked her. Yeah, and what I really loved her in was another child star we should probably talk about, Macaulay Culkin. The two of them did this film together called Saved. I saw Saved? that, yes. Oh, hysterical. Very funny. Yeah, really, Very really funny. good. Really good. That's and, good. And uh, and she had an edge then, you know. I mean, I, it was she was still playing a teenager, and she was probably beyond her teenage years at that point, but playing a teenager, as you will. Susan Sarandon's child was also in that movie, her daughter, uh, who was very good uh, as well. But yeah, I mean, you could you could tell that she was going to a good place, and now she's you know she's an adult. Not the choreographer of La La Land, by the way. That's a different Mandy Moore. I didn't know that. I went to go see La La Land. Oh. It was like choreographed by Mandy Moore. I it's thought Mandy, one. different no. Mandy Moore. Yeah, that makes um, sense. There are two Mandy Moores out there. But uh, yeah, she's doing great things on this. Uh, this is us. Um, people really like her. Well, and I think I guess my feeling about this whole child star thing is that what w- what makes it hopeful so that maybe you do go to the catalog cattle call and take your kid. Okay, maybe that you do let them become models or actors or whatever. I guess the feeling that is hopeful about it is that there does seem, when I'm looking at things and remembering, a longer list of those who succeeded. I yeah. mean, folks, we didn't even talk about yeah. uh, Justin Timberlake, um, Valerie Justin Timberlake Bertinelli, is huge, yeah, Molly Ringwald, um, Janet Jackson. Oh, the Harry Potter kids. All of the Harry Potter kids. Just, well, Ron Weasley apparently, um, the the kid who played Ron Weasley. Mm-hmm. He decided after the Harry Potter movies wrecked that he was going to delight children all over the UK by buying an ice cream truck and just showing up and surprising them because Ron oh Weasley was gosh. handing them ice cream. He just decided to do this. Well, I think that they all got really good contracts for yeah. Harry Potter. Only a good person decides to do that. I think that's awesome. But Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson are doing amazing work. Daniel Radcliffe is a good actor. He really is. Yeah. So is Emma Watson. Yeah. Diane Lane, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. Oh my gosh. Jason Bateman. Reese Witherspoon. I mean, the, the list really and does go huge. on. It really is huge. And I think that that is Miley Cyrus. Did you say Miley Cyrus? I didn't. Okay, Miley Cyrus is in there, too. Yeah, uh, there, was, there was a point in time where we wondered if she was going to go the way of... Correct, but I know. think she... And, and, and it was pretty quickly that she turned it to... You but know. here's what I say about Miley Cyrus. Mm. You might think she's nuts, but when you think Miley Cyrus, you no longer think the words Hannah Montana. She no, you made don't. you forget. You are correct. Hannah Montana. And I wonder if she just wasn't crazy like a fox and just had, you know, oh, she I might have so. had a strategy. I feel like she was very much the Madonna of of, of her career. Yeah. In that Madonna always, it was, she'd always had a, a controversy every yeah. time, you know, she uh-huh. put out an album. There was always some controversy yeah. about it. People were talking about it. And people were buying it. And Miley does that too. Is that Miley doesn't need to do that to get attention because she's also an amazing singer. She's got a fantastic voice. And writer. Um, So she can do she can do it, but Mm -hmm. I think she needed the world to forget all about Hannah Montana so that she could be herself. I agree, which is what happens sometimes with these when they're they're kid stars and then they want to get away from that kid star part. And a lot of times, unfortunately, they go toward addiction. And down that road, but then you have the other ones who figure out another way, a healthier way. And again, I say, and I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that Billy Ray Cyrus is the best parent in the world. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But I do. But the, he was present, and his wife was present, mm-hmm. and I feel like that seems to be a theme. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying yeah. it is for sure the reason because I, there may be people here, you know, these ones who succeeded. You know, I know Justin Timberlake very strong connection with his mom. Yeah, I know I that's that. you know, and Drew Barrymore again, crazy mother who dropped her off at Studio Fifty Four parties. So uh-huh. no, Drew pulled up by herself. But you know, well, and with a little bit of help from Steven Spielberg. Who apparently oh, that's was, right. was very much with her during some of her she was troubled times. Three I or think four took a little, you yeah. know, not not responsibility. I don't think he took any accountability for her troubles, no. but very much saw that she was in need of, yeah. you know, and, and was very. That's much right. There I forgot for her. about that because she was in ET. Yeah, and she was great. She was absolutely. She was a natural, and yes. and 
So it's really good to see her succeed as a producer and director as she is now. Yeah, yeah. So have you seen her new zombie comedy on Netflix? I have seen it. It's there, and I have it on my watch list. I the, haven't looked at it. The previews look hilarious. They do look very funny, and she's she's good. She can do anything. I can see her. I doing tell you drama what, her HBO comedy. version of Grey Gardens when she played. I saw lady, it. I saw it. She's amazing. I forgot. She's I forgot that. that I was not watching the real people. Yes. Yes. And that's how good she is. Yes. But it didn't surprise me because I've seen her do well on everything. That surprised like. me. I good little mm-hmm. Edie is a that's a big hill to climb. If you if you know the documentary. Uh, yep, I do. That's a, to try to do it without being a caricature and no, without just doing I, an imitation she was amazing. and really embody it. She really did. I think she won the Emmy for that and earned every inch of it if she won it. Well, as I said, I think that it's good that the list of those who succeeded is longer than the list of of those who didn't quite come out of it. Not yeah. to say we named everybody who hasn't come out of exactly. it. There are a lot that, that had rough times. But, but final but diagnosis for me is that, you know, it's it's not necessarily a curse, right, to be a child star. It's not a, it's not a one-way ticket to unhappiness and misery. Right. But I do, you know, and I'm not a parent. I'm not going to tell anyone how to be a parent. But, you know, it, it seems that if kids really do have that yen to go perform it's something they have to do um, then maybe letting him do it is not the worst thing in the world maybe that's better for them than stifling that if that's something I they agree really... I think if they have the drive and they need and the passion then they, they need to do that for themselves for the, to be successful then I think uh, being a parent who can support them but also keep them grounded I think that's that's important is for them to have some kind of a foundation somewhere of normalcy just so that they're not they don't go cray cray yeah this has been Poperation You've been listening to Poperation with Eric and Stacy. Check out our website at poperationroom.com for links to our blog and other extras. Don't forget to subscribe to Poperation via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, and other podcast locations. You can also follow at Poperation Room on Facebook and Twitter. Music provided by purpleplanet.com.